Hi guys, I am back and I am on a different iPad. It's on, I'm on my little mini iPad. So um, it is a lot easier to see what I'm doing, that's for sure, because it's hanging pretty low. I don't know uh, if, uh, if it has the same screen pixels as the other one has, I'm not sure, but uh, in any case, I can uh, still do the videoing, so that's good, because I just brought my little Exorcist iPad to the store, because it is, you know, it went totally berserk a couple of days ago. It, it, it went from worse to worse, and um, so this morning I had to go to the doctor's. Uh, not a real doctor, but more, you know, when you are on sick leave, you have those doctors that you have to go to, and they um, they just want to talk to you, see if you can uh, go back to work, and if not, then they make an appointment with you to um, to see you again in a couple of weeks. In my case, uh, in six weeks. Oh, there's my uh, vegetable juice. Thank you, Bill. So um, that's where I went this morning. That's why I got a little, uh, the time slipped away. Because right after that I had to go to another town where they, um, where they do the iPad care. And you can bring your iPad in. But the thing is, I almost never go anywhere. You know, I go to work, I come home, I do art, and that's about my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind, I like it. But, um, so I had to go to this other town, but they were, you know, doing some road uh, reparations on the roads. And they had, um, you know, when you have your um, navigation system, and sometimes they do this um, this reparation, and they do roadblocks all over the place. Well, your navigation never gets to, um, it, it doesn't know wh where to go. So... I got really upset about it, and uh, I couldn't find my way, and then I just went to the uh, store where I buy my paint, because that's the same town, and I put the car somewhere, and I walked. So I put the, uh, the navigation on my iPad, and I walked to the store. So I got there. You can imagine I was pretty uh, upset about it. So I got there, and then the guy says, do you have your uh, sales sheet thing? You know, that I bought that thing? I said, you are kidding me. He said, no, we can't take this if, unless you give us um, the bill of sale. We can't do any reparations on this. We can't even take it in if you don't have it. So I'm, I look at him, I said, listen, it, this is like, if I have to drive home and come back, I'll be hours, it's hours. And uh, he says, well, we can't make any exceptions, I'm sorry. So I dig into my iPad and um, I got to the shop where I bought it and I have, um, how do you call it, you know, I have one of those accounts there, so luckily I could get it. So he said, okay, that's cool, that's, uh, that's enough. Then he said, do you have your uh, Apple uh, incident number? I said, my Apple incident number? I said, no, yeah, I have it. I said, at home. He said, well, then you still have to go home and get that because we can't do anything without that number. And uh, the steam was coming out of my ears by then, but I didn't, I didn't let him see that. I said, are you joking? I said, you can call Apple, can't you? Yeah, I, they have that number because I called them two or three times in the last two weeks. And he said, uh, no, sorry, no, we can't do that. I said, uh, then I'll call them. And he said, oh, that's going to take at least a half an hour if you get on the phone with them. I said, well, it's better than driving home and back. That's going to take me four hours. So I called them in the shop, and it was like ten minutes, and they gave me the number. Then he said, um, I think your iPad is a bent. And he held that in front of me. He said, can you see how bent it is? I said, bent? I said, this iPad, this, it's, it's six, six months old, there's nothing happened to it, I haven't dropped it, I haven't sat on it, there's nothing wrong with the iPad. I said, isn't it because it's so big, because it's one of those iPad Pros, those really big ones. 
he said no 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 it shouldn't be like this and he put it on the uh, on the the counter and I'm telling you it's like not even a millimeter if you press it in the middle you see it going down a little bit but like it's nothing so I say you know come on you're kidding me he said no they will look at this and if they find it you have to pay for everything I say, if they look at it and they find it, I'll throw that thing in the rubbish because I'm done with it, really. And that's really, that, that is what I'm going to do because if they come up with, I have to pay something like, I don't know, 600 euros to fix that thing, then that thing will cost me 2,000 euros. Can you imagine for a, for a freaking iPad? I'm not going to do that. So then they can just keep it. I can tell you that. <clears throat> so I'm mixing paint as we talk because there were a couple of questions you guys were asking I have to say you guys are so sweet and kind and you got all these kind things to say and you know I get a little upset because of those stupid people but then the next morning I read about I don't know I, I think you guys left like a hundred comments I haven't even uh, answered them uh, all because there's so many of them but they are so heartwarming that I just forget about that negative person and I just want to focus on you guys, the kind ones the people that make this such an enjoyable thing to do all day long because you guys are amazing, that's what you are so um, I don't care about those silly negative people you know, if you have nothing else to do but go on YouTube and whine about the quality and about my hair being in the picture and I don't know what else and making things up that it's my way or the highway well like never you know if you have nothing else to do oh that was I think that's a, such a sad life don't you guys can you imagine living like that if that's all you have to do just whine and nag and be negative and what a waste of life really so that brings me to the next subject because someone asked me um, what do you do for work if you feel comfortable telling us what you do well of course I feel comfortable uh, telling you guys anything because um, well I think we have built up a relationship <laughs> that I can tell you I can tell you guys everything that's how I feel really some of you really key into that feeling that you say you know every morning that you have a feeling you're looking at a friend and um, you feel like you know you're just meeting up with a friend and you're just chit chatting away and I don't know that's the way I feel too and I know every day I get new new viewers because that's been amazing too I just passed 11,000 subscribers and it's it's like I started February 10th and I'm over 11,000 in just a couple of months is that amazing or what I think it is so if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Because I would like to see 15,000. That would be so cool. Okay, um, back to what I do. Okay, it's a little bit sad and it's a little bit okay. And, it's, uh, and why I'm going to talk about it is because it's a sort of a life lesson. Um, why I'm uh, homesick. I, um, like last year in... I think it was April, April, May. Um, I felt a little lump, not in the breast, but on the side of my ribs. And it was um, like about six inches under my armpit, but you know, on the ribs. I felt a little lump. And I was thinking, you know, that is nothing. Because, you know, who has cancer there? Nobody. And uh, it's just a little lump. And it'll go away. And my husband had to go to hospital, so I thought, you know, just, I'm not going to make him upset with telling him I, I got a lump somewhere. So I'm not going to make him upset. So then he came back from the hospital. He was okay. He just had to have a minor thing. And um, then we had our vacation, and uh, we had that planned. We went a week to those uh, to Ameland. It's an island uh, on the coast of uh, Holland. So I thought, you know, I'm not going to go to a doctor, you know, that all that, that stuff that goes on and it'll ruin the vac vacation feeling and all that kind of stuff. So I went on vacation and I came back 
And I thought, you know, but it wasn't getting any smaller. So I had a bad feeling about it. So I thought, you know, I'm back now, so why not go to the doctor and let them check it. So my doctor was on vacation, but I thought I'm going to do this anyway because I'm not going to postpone it any longer. So I went to another doctor and it was a woman and she sent me to um, the hospital to get it uh, e echoed. You know, with the, I don't know how they do that with the babies too. So they, um, she sent me there and... Um, I could see, I, you know, sometimes you look at someone's face when they examine you and you know exactly that it's not going to be good. And that's the feeling I had. And she said, you know, we have to do um, one of those memo, mammographs. And uh, I was thinking, oh shit, because I hate that. But we did that and there was nothing uh, on there, nothing in the breasts. And she said, well, I, I really have to do a biopsy because we have to send that send that up there to the uh, to the laboratorium. So they did a biopsy and it took five days and I had an uh, I had an appointment with an on oncologist, one of those doctors that do cancer things. And uh, so my husband went with me but usually I like to do that stuff alone because I don't like it when he goes in and I don't want to get him upset and all that stuff. So the doctor uh, called me in and he said, do you have someone with you? I said, I do, but I just want to do this alone. And he said, I don't think that's a good idea. And I thought, oh my God, this is not going to be good. Because if they say that, that's not going to be good. So I said, I don't care. I want to do this alone anyway. So he said, okay, come in. And he said, well, I have some really, really bad news. You have one of the most aggressive forms of cancer there is. And it's called MPSTN. That's the English uh, abbreviation. It's um, oh, I could I could name it, but I forgot about it already. So it it was some sort of a weird weird cancer. So um, I asked for a second opinion, and you know I I get really cool. I don't cry. I don't do anything. I'm just thinking, okay, let's deal with this. So I asked him for a second opinion. Now first I got a scan because he thought it was already um, metastasized, you know, in the uh, lungs and in, in the brain and all that kind of stuff. He was asking me all kinds of stuff. Do you have difficulty swallowing? Do you have this? Do you have that? And I had nothing. I didn't. I felt great. So then uh, I went for those scans and uh, then I got that, them back and they said, no, it's okay only there and didn't metastasize so um, we want to schedule a surgery and I said you know what I want a second opinion um, I think it would be good if you sent me to one of those really good university uh, hospitals where they do all the research and he was really cool about it because he had worked there so he said okay I think you should and he fixed that that I could go there then they said it was a different kind of cancer it was um uh, a metastasized melanoma, something like that. But they said, you know, you need to have a PET scan from from uh, from your head to your toes, uh, totally, because we want to know where where it's coming from. So I had one of those, and then they found a tumor in my thyroid. Wow, I'm I'm so cool that I can do all this in in English. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazing myself. So I had a tumor in my thyroid, that they found that also. So first they, they were going to take that other thing away, so I had my operation. And they took out 14 lymph nodes. And in one there was cancer, and it was totally capsuled, capsuled in, so that's good. But then they wanted to do radiotherapy anyway. and. While I was doing this, I was doing these videos, so you never, you, you guys never had a clue. But, you know, why I'm, I'm talking about it now is because, you know, I know there are so many, so many people going through this, getting the, the diagnosis of cancer, you know, it's a slap in the face, it numbs you, you think, you know, your life is coming to an end and it's going to be all over in a couple of months and all that kind of stuff. 
And um, I know people think like that, but I don't. I just thought, you know, come on, let's get on with it. Let's fix this, and I want to get on with my life. But it doesn't go that fast because they schedule surgeries, and then I you have to go through radiotherapy. Then you have to get a little bit stronger and get some energy back. And then they, they did my thyroid. They took half the thyroid out. And then I got, um, I went back for the, um, because they send that to some sort of a laboratory too. And uh, he said, well, I got good news. It's, it was nothing. <laughs> so, so they chop out half your thyroid and then it's nothing. That is funny too, isn't it? But, uh, so, all the while, I was doing these videos, and March 3rd, I had a scan to see if um, anything was coming back, you know. By the time they operated, the that, that lump was pretty much closer to my armpit, so they scanned that, and they found nothing. They said it looked all, looked good. And my next scan is in September, where they're going to do a full scan again, one of those PET scans. So that's why I'm home in between doing videos and in between going to work, because I work three days a week. I work four hours and, you know, just getting my energy back to, um, to where it was before, I hope doesn't have to be though. It can be that, you know, nothing changes and you stay tired forever. They told me that. So, and I do have a little, my arm hurts when I wake up in the morning because I lay on that arm. So that's not good either. But my job is, I am a manager at a really, really big telecom communication company. So what I do is I talk to um, the people in my team. I usually have a team with sometimes 18, 19, sometimes 20. It, it goes up to 24. I've had a team of 120, but that was a, like total madness. But usually you have, um, you have like 20 in your team. And uh, you help those people to just do a really good job. So I listen to um, <laughs> the, I listen to a lot of those calls where um, someone calls and says, "I don't know what's wrong, but my email doesn't work." <laughs> so and oh, I could tell you stories. I could write books about those calls. So much fun. My job is really a lot of fun, and I love all the people in my team. You know, I love them just as much as I love a family member because they are so cool and good and so fun to be with it's unreal so that's what I do and right now when I go to work I do eh, a little bit of that administrative stuff and I do a little bit of uh, listening to the calls and then I go home and then I do a painting that's what I do so um, I'm gonna chop this uh, video in half because uh, all this chit chat. I'll put it. I'll put it on there like um, video uh, number 143. Chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. Then anyone that doesn't like my chit chat can just skip the whole video, and um, that's good. So, what's the um, what's the story about? I think the story is about uh, that. Even when you get a really bad diagnosis, you shouldn't, don't go sit in the corner and cry all day long. Don't do that because I think that is what really kills you. You know, think of it as, okay, maybe you have a short time, maybe you have a long time, but you have to make something out of that time. Because if you don't, and you go sit in a corner and you go cry all day long and really really feel sorry then I'm sure that sickness is gonna get you and if you don't and if you just think you know go away you know what I did the first six weeks I went on a really really strange diet because I thought I had to do that and I took no animal uh, protein I did no coffee and I drank coffee all day long but I, I stopped cold turkey I just stopped drinking coffee 
no more sugar. I still don't take sugar in my coffee because I like the honey better. And um, I lost about 10 kilos, uh, which are almost back on by now. But, um, you know, I thought that was just good to do. And who knows, maybe that did do something. And I did a lot more, by the way, which I might tell you in another video. <clears throat> okay, I am ready mixing. The video I will be doing, I'm going to stop now and then start again. Because the video I'm going to be doing is comparing the treadmill uh, silicone with my normal spray silicone. I have exactly the same colors and they are mixed exactly the same. So uh, we will see. And I'm going to use a good canvas because I'm pretty confident that something cool is going to come out of this. So I'm going to do two of the same pores. Only the only difference is the silicone, and I'm thinking should I put flu Floetrol in there because I am really I'm I'm a fan of Floetrol. Maybe I will just a little spot, but I'll show you when I do that. So up to now, I'm gonna stop this video, start a new one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.